Hi, and welcome back. So, in the past couple of videos, we've been talking about Millikan's oil drop experiment, and I think I might have done probably more harm than good uh, with uh, particularly the last video. I, I sort of gave you a, a probably a pretty unclear description of the actual experiment. And also, I brought up some new terms that you might be that you might not be familiar with. And the first, the first thing I, I want to talk about is at the end of the video, at the end of the last video, I actually gave you what Millikan uh, determined the charge of one electron to be, which was minus one point six zero times ten to the minus nineteen coulombs. So this unit, this C. That stands for coulombs. And that is just pretty much, it's a very, very, very small unit of electric charge. And it's going to be the unit of electric charge that, that we're going to see most often in chemistry because it's the unit that most accurately represents the attraction between electrons and protons. And so this is going to be the unit with which we're going to represent the charge of one electron. So that's the first thing I wanted to clear up. I'll, I'll probably, I'll definitely talk more about Coulombs in the future of this, uh, in uh, further on in the future of this playlist. But for right now, all you have to know about a Coulomb is just that it is a unit of electric charge. So the other thing that, uh, going back over that video, I'm realizing I got wrong, or at least uh, I got, uh, uh, probably isn't very clear, is that I, I had this uh, model of Millikan's experiment. It looks something like this. It was an experiment that took place inside of a, a tank-looking uh, looking structure. And let me just go ahead and draw. We had our positively charged plate on the bottom, or else actually, let me think, I think that might have been, actually no, the positively charged plate was on the top, so let me actually redo that. So, okay, so the negatively charged plate was on the bottom, so this plate had a negative charge, and the positively charged plate was on the top, so this had a positive charge. And if you remember, and I'll draw this, draw this in yellow again. So we had our atomizer that was squirting in these little, tiny little drops of oil. So just as tiny as he could possibly get these little drops of oil. And there was a little hole in this top positively charged plate. So the drops would just sort of free fall down. And then there's one other thing about this diagram that I, that I didn't draw in in the last video. And that was that there is a source, and we don't necessarily have to know too much about this for right now, and we'll talk about this later on in the playlist for sure, but there is a source, and I'll draw it in purple, of ionizing radiation. So ionizing, ion, ionite, oh, I can't spell ionizing radiation and pretty much what this was going to do was it was actually going to make these charged particles so you can probably imagine you were saying oh well these these uh, particles when they came out these you know they they had equal numbers of protons and electrons they didn't they're you know unless they they had to have developed a charge somehow but you know, most likely that they had an equal number of protons and electrons, so they wouldn't really have a have they wouldn't really be influenced by the charge of a positive or negative plate because you know these atom these little atoms these drops of oil would have been themselves neutral, and that's true until they hit this ionizing radiation, and that is what is going to charge the particles or make these particles respond to the charge. And then, so I told you in the last video that pretty much what was measured was the amount of electric charge that had to be applied to these two plates in order to stop this little drop from free fall. So in order to suspend this little drop in between these two plates, they were, uh, they were figuring out what was 
the amount of a charge that needed to be applied to these two plates in order to stop this drop from falling. And so just to go over it, and I kind of mentioned this, and this was what uh, my apple picking example was sort of all about, was that, was that Millikan figured that whatever number of electrons had to have been in this little drop it had to have been because each electron was really going to have the same charge. Each electron was, I guess, uh, really going to have an equal charge. That the number of electrons, or, or the charge that was required to stop each of these drops from free fall, so the charge that was required to, to completely neutralize uh, the charge in, uh, in one of these drops, had to, had to be a whole number, whole number, multiple of the charge, of the charge of one electron. And that was how Millikan discovered this number, this one, this minus 1.60 times 10 to the minus 19 coulombs, was because all of the trials that Millikan did with this experiment, and he did many, many trials. So in my apple picking example, I only had four different apple baskets. Imagine if we had had 400 different apple baskets. We could have figured out, you know, maybe, maybe an apple, you know, we, we could have figured out with more certainty than an apple that that uh, I I can't even remember what the weight of the apple was from that from that uh, example, but maybe you know we could have with more trials found out that the app the weight of an apple actually was half what we thought it was. So what what Millikan did was he did many many experiments and many many trials of this experiment, and he found out that every single measurement of charge that that he applied in order to stop this drop from free fall was always a multiple of this number. It was always a multiple of minus 1.60 times 10 to the minus 19 coulombs. So anyway, hopefully that clarifies what I said in the last video, uh, hopefully at least a little bit. Uh, I'm almost out of time in this video, so uh, in the next video I'll actually just give you one more sort of uh, real, well, it's not really a real life, but one, uh, one more example of Millikan's oil drop with maybe some notional results that, that perhaps he could have gotten from this experiment, and we'll see if we can come up with this same answer. So anyway, thanks so much for watching, and I'll see you soon.